Today, guys, starting my ECW review series where I review every single pay per view from ECW. So let's get started. Barely Legal 1997. I have a feeling it's going to be my favorite review series to do because ECW had the best pay per views out of any company. And we're going to start it off with a good one. Barely Legal 1997 review. This is their first ever pay per view. The Eliminators defeated the Dudley Boys. <laughs> the Eliminators being, of course, Perry Sanders and John Cronus. Um, they were pretty cool. They were a pretty cool team. They had this, they had this sick move called the Doomsday Device. It was pretty sick. It's kind of like the Ascension's finisher, but way cooler. Um, this for the tag team titles. This is pretty short. I loved Joel Gertner. He was fucking awesome. He was hilarious. Um, but. I always, um, the match was only like six minutes, gave it two stars. RVD defeats Lance Storm. Um, they, I mean, these guys had a lot of matches in ECW. This was like just a little taste of what was to come with these two. I mean, they had, all, had an awesome match at this one pay per view. I forgot the names, but I believe it was the one before RVD faced Jerry Lynn, if I'm not mistaken. But this was really good. Oh, I think uh, RV. I mean, Lance Storm was scheduled to face Chris Canito, but RVD had to replace him. And as you know, RVD is no replacement. He's Mr. PPV Pay Per View RVD. So I gave it three and a half stars. Um, weak chair shots by Lance Storm. Terrible. Degree Sasuke, Gran Hamada, and. Masato Yakashuji defeats BWO Japan. Uh, BWO, the regular BWO, was a parody of the NWO. Uh, BWO Japan had Takamichi Noku in there. That's basically all the cruiserweights, Japanese people I know. Um, Takamichi Noku was in the BWO. This match is very fun. A lot of high flying spots, fast paced action. What well, ECW is kind of known for their cruiserweights. One of the things they're known for. They, they're known for two things, hardcore wrestling and good wrestling, two good things. Match gets three and three quarter out of five stars. Almost match in the night, Shane Douglas defeats Pitbull too. This match is fucking awful. Never like Shane Douglas, garbage in the ring. He was just all, he was just trash. He needed Francine to get over. He never got booed. Like, he was a terrible heel. Like, he never got a reaction. Every time he came out, he never got a reaction. Pitbull 2 was botching everywhere. These two were botching. They botched so many moves in this match. Weak chair shots by the franchise. Fuck the franchise, by the way. He's garbage. And I gave the match. This is for the TV title. I gave the match three-fourths of a star. And this was like 20 minutes long. Taz defeated Sabu in an awesome match. Um, Taz is fucking awesome back in the day. He's my top 10 favorites of all time. Probably number 10. Best suplexes out of anybody I've ever seen in my life. Great suplexes, great match. Uh, Sabu was fucking crazy. The way he could springboard off a chair was just insane. On the tables on the outside and, to, and in the crowd was awesome. Um, I love that triple jump moonsault he does. Um, Taz won. Taz basically unbeatable at ECW. Good match, four stars. Um, Terry Funk. Defeated Sandman, Stevie Richards was a three-way dance for number one contendership for the ECW title later in the night. Um, as you know, uh, the ECW's three-way dance is how they would work. Um, it was elimination, so Stevie Richards got up first by both the Sandman and Terry Funk. It was a double cover. Then Terry Funk eliminated Sandman. I liked how they got the barbed wire um, out at the end. The crowd really didn't know what it was, but it was still awesome to see that. You saw it like ripping the flesh of... Sandman, it was pretty f gross and cool at the same time. Three and a half out of five stars, pretty, pretty extreme match. I always wondered why Stevie Richards was in the match. Even Stevie Richards himself in the ECW documentary was wondering why he was put in the match. But Terry Funk gets to face Raven, three and a half out of five stars. I always loved the Raven character, I thought it was badass. Um, Terry Funk defeated a Raven from Help and Tommy Dreamer. When uh, Tommy Dreamer hit that, well, Raven was going for a hip toss on Tommy Dreamer. And Tommy Dreamer reversed into a sick DDT. Um, it was 
was it me or just did Tommy Dreamer irk the fuck out of anybody at this time? I mean, he was just a pretty boy, pretty boy uh, jock. He seemed like with it, with his voice, you know, just a jock. You don't like, like the jocks in my school. They always talk about freaking sports. <laughs> it's like, do, do you ever talk about anything else? I mean, he's just like a stereotype, you know. <laughs> but like, uh, obviously, I'm not part of the jocks. I'm on the freaking bowling team. Not in that group, no way. Um, so Terry Funk got the win. It was very emotional. Uh, Joey Styles was crying. A lot of people, Paul Heyman was crying. He said in the documentary, I gave the match an NA because it really wasn't anything. It was just a great moment to see. It was really short for a title match, and they really didn't do anything. Give the match a seven. I don't. <laughs> NA, but great. I gave it. It is pay-per-view a 7.75 7 out of 10. Good showing for the first ECW pay-per-view. Great showing by ECW. And I'll be back tomorrow my next review. Also, I have my, uh, this is my Easter break. I haven't told you this. I've been on a break for like four days. So, I got like five more days to go. So, I'm going to be pumping out videos. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.